Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Satish, and I am your trainer for this Azure Administrator Associate AZ One Hundred Four Certification Exam. We are going through Module Seven. Module Seven is all about Azure Storage, and in this lesson, we're going to learn about storage security. Let's look at from a high level point of view. What are the topics we are going to learn in this lesson? We'll talk about the storage security. And what is shared access signature? Then we will touch upon URI and SAS parameters. And during all these topics, don't worry about the demonstration. I will go back and forth to show you exactly what I mean by each topic, so you are completely aware of what the concept is all about. Then we will touch base on storage service encryption and customer managed keys. And finally, I will finish this lesson with storage security best practices. So, without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Azure Storage provides a comprehensive set of security capabilities that together enable developers to build secure applications. In this video, I will focus on shared access signature. But also cover storage encryption and some best practices. Some of the high-level security capabilities of Azure Storage are encryption, authentication, data in transit, data encryption, and shared access signatures. Every request made against a shared resource in the blob, file, queue, and table service must be authorized. Authorization ensures that resources in your storage account are accessible only when you want them to be, and only to those users or application to whom you grant access. So, options for authorizing requests to the Azure Storage include Azure Active Directory, Shared Key, Shared Access Signature, and anonymous access to containers and blobs. So, let's understand what is Shared Access Signature. A shared access signature or SAS is a URI that grants restricted access rights to Azure storage resources. Let me show you where you can find the storage access signature. I'm on my Azure portal. Within storage account, select an existing storage account. Under settings, you can find shared access signature. You can provide a shared access signature to clients who should not be trusted with your storage account key but whom you wish to delegate access to certain storage account resources by distributing a shared access signature uri to these clients you grant them access to a resource for a specific period of time sas is a secure way to share your storage resources without compromising your account keys a shared access signature Gives you a granular control over the type of access you grant to clients who have the SaaS. Please note that there are two types of SaaS accounts and services. The account SaaS delegates access to resources in one or more of the storage services, and the service SaaS delegate access to resources in just one of the storage account. And a stored access policy can provide an additional level of control over service level SaaS on the server side. Let's understand the URI and SaaS parameters. As you create a SaaS, a URI is created using the parameters and tokens. The URI consists of your storage resource URI and SaaS token. So let me show you how to create that. I'm in my storage account within shared access signature. Select the type of SaaS key, select the type of SaaS URI you would like to create. I'm going to allow access to the blob storage and only to the container, and I just want to limit the permission to read. And I would like to end this access within a certain amount of within a certain number of days. If I want, I can further drill down and allow an IP address as well. And I can click on Generate SaaS and Connection String. When you do that, you get your SaaS token and the SaaS URL and the connection string. You can basically copy this token 
and give it to the user or the company who is trying to access the data. Let's understand the storage service encryption. Azure Storage Service Encryption or SSE for data at rest help you protect your data to meet your organizational security and compliance requirements. With this feature, the Azure Storage Platform automatically encrypts your data before persisting it to Azure Managed Disk, Azure Blob, Queue, Table Storage, or Azure Files and decrypts the data before retrieval. The handling of encryption, encryption at rest, decryption, and key management in storage service encryption is transparent to users. So let me show you where you can do that. So within the storage accounts, under settings, you can click on you can click on encryption. All data written within the Azure Storage Platform is encrypted through 256-bit AES encryption. One of the strongest block ciphers available. Please note that storage service encryption is enabled for all new and existing storage account and cannot be disabled. Because your data is secured by default, you don't need to modify your code or applications. So what is customer managed key? If you prefer, you can use the Azure Key Vault to manage your encryption keys. With the Key Vault, you can create your own encryption keys and store them in the Key Vault or you can use Azure Key Vault APIs to generate encryption keys. So let me show you how to access the Customer Manage Keys. So within the Azure portal, go to your storage account and inside Encryption, you can see the Customer Manage Keys or you can go to Encryption Scope and add a new Customer Manage Key as well. Using custom keys give you more flexibility and control when creating, disabling, auditing, rotating and defining access controls. Please note that to use customer managed keys with SSE, you can either create a new key vault and key or you can use an existing key vault and key. The storage account and the key vault must be in the same region but they can be in different subscriptions. All right, so let's look at some of the storage security best practices. When you use shared access signature in your application, you should be aware of two potential risks. If the shared access signature is compromised, it can be used by anyone who obtains it. If a shared access signature provided to a client application expires, and the application is unable to retrieve a new SaaS from your service, then the application functionality may be hindered. You could use these following recommendations for using shared access signature and help you mitigate these risks. Always use HTTPS to create or distribute a SaaS. If a SaaS key is passed over HTTP and intercepted, an attacker performing a man-in-the-middle attack is able to read the SAS and then use it just as the intended user could have, potentially compromising sensitive data or allowing for data corruption by the malicious user. And please use reference stored access policies when possible. So stored access policies give you the option to revoke permissions without having to regenerate the storage account keys. The next recommendation is use near term expiration times on an ad hoc SaaS. In this way, even if a SaaS is compromised, it's valid only for a short time. This practice is especially important if you cannot reference a stored access policy. So the near-term expiration times also limit the amount of data that can be written to a blob by limiting the time available to upload to it. Another recommendation is have clients automatically renew the SAS key if necessary. The client should renew the SAS key well before the expiration. 
a security best practice is to provide a user with the minimum required privileges and understand that your account will be built for any sort of usage. If you provide right access to a blob, a user may choose to upload a 200 GB blob. If you have given them read access as well, they may choose to download it 10 times, inquiring 2 TB in egress cost. Another recommendation is validate data written using SAS. When a client application writes data to your storage account, keep in mind that there can be problems with that data. And don't assume SAS is always the correct choice. Sometimes the risk associated with a particular operation against your storage account outweigh the benefit of SAS. So that concludes the lesson on shared access signature and storage security. In the next video, we are still on module 7. It's all about Azure storage. We're going to learn about Azure files and file sync. So I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.